celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, sorry. I'd like to invite Des to come forward and ask you to be seated for Desmond's eulogy. Good morning, or good afternoon, sorry. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Desmond Lynn Jr., <clears throat> but you all know my dad. My dad was born on uh, November 11th, 1937, Remembrance Day. He'd always tell us, my birthday is Remembrance Day, you can never forget it. Every year he said that, same thing. <clears throat> he was born around the corner, 15 Moyer Street, Calton boy, baptized in this very chapel, born to a very large family as most were in those days. He had a good upbringing, running around the streets of the Calton with his brothers and sisters, <clears throat> and many, many friends, some of the people in this room, in this church. He belonged to a youth charity organization called the Santoy Calton Tongs. He used to say things like Tongja. <clears throat> As with most ch children of that era, <clears throat> 
Over here, football was a great passion. Perhaps my dad's first love was a Celtic football club, and certainly not his last. He often told me many stories of Celtic in those days, but he always defaulted to the 7-1 game, hand him, hand him in the sun, <clears throat> how he ended up in the Rangers end in the first half, and how he escaped unharmed for the second half, where he really enjoyed himself. <clears throat> Dad would tell his tales of his time working at the Central Hotel. I'm sure some of you have heard this story. <clears throat> I often wondered if they were true or not, but the, the story has never changed. He met Laurel and Hardy. He gave them a hard time about the tip he received. Um, he caddied for Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. But his most famous story was Roy Rogers and the horse Trigger. <clears throat> How he had to take Trigger up the stairs because the elevator wasn't working. They made a room full of hay. That didn't work out because you know what horses do. Right? He foiled a plot to kidnap the horse. I think some of the guys were in this uh, chapel. Um, so it was, it was a happy story. It actually, made, it actually made a book and he got interviewed on TV. So some of the people in this room here were giving him a hard time about that, but he was very proud of that moment, that time of his life. <clears throat> As a teenager in Glasgow, the dancing was a big part of life. No, no different for dad where he met my mom and quickly fell in love. <clears throat> mom had other aspirations. She wanted a new life, so mom went to Canada. My dad followed quickly behind her. <clears throat> when they arrived in Toronto, they met up, got married September 25th, 1965. They gave birth to myself and Susan, and a new saga begins. Dad made loads and loads of friends in Canada and across North America. Really unbelievable how many. He was a founding member of the Toronto Celtic Supporters Club. His love for a good laugh and friendship spanned, spanned the great divide. So much so that my dad used to get invited to the Rangers Club family picnics. So he would proudly dress me up in the full Celtic kit and take me to these, these picnics. That's where I found out exactly how fast a runner I was. <laughs> my father was always in for a good laugh, you know, by himself, believe it or not, in company, in the house, wherever he was. Years ago, I used to work in a, a pub called Maggie Mays in Toronto, Scarborough. And uh, my dad came in on a Saturday after the Celtic Club. You know, he was feeling pretty good. And uh, so I get him his usual drink, the Picardian and Coke at the time. Still was, you know, right to the end, really. <clears throat> These drinks came with little stir sticks, right, that were shaped like arrows, you know, bow and arrows. So I'm doing my business, and I'm watching him out of the corner of my eye, and he's fiddling about with the stir sticks. And I don't know what he's doing, right? Anyway. He orders another drink, but he orders it, he's got eye, eye contact, and he sort of does the one eye thing, and then the sign language, which I think was a, a Lynn trait, you know. So we knew exactly what he wanted, right? So I walked up to him, and I go, Dad, what on earth are you doing with the stir sticks? And he goes, we out of people. <laughs> I go, really, Dad? Okay, time for you to go home. All right. So living in Toronto, my mother would get the phone bills in. She'd lose her mind because my dad loved to make the phone calls to Scotland at, and the time here was four o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. Just to say that he loved his brothers and sisters. You know, my Uncle Tony didn't love those phone calls. But if you had your number, you got the call of love at four o'clock in the morning Scotland time. We would also get bills from different parts of the world. South Africa, we didn't know anybody in South Africa. Rome, the Vatican. I said, Dad, are you trying to call the Pope? He goes, I. Just the way he was. My dad was a musician. He played the spoons. He was actually good at it. But I learned at a very young age, he didn't sit beside Dad when he was playing the spoons because you became a spoon. A couple other little adventures that he'd done, some stories, I'll be quick. My dad actually got locked in three different pubs in his lifetime, overnight. How does that happen to one man? You know, but that's him. He, he, would, uh, he would do funny things, you know. He, <clears throat> he managed to find his pals one time in a remote area of Ontario, in the middle of a severe snow, snowstorm. There was no GPS in those days to bring much needed supplies for those guys, like beer and cigarettes and cheese, you know. To their sheer amazement, he would show up at 
you know, two o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. <clears throat> the call to return to Glasgow was always in their heart. Uh, my mom and dad spent 42 years in Canada, but they really honestly didn't settle there. Glasgow was their home. So they retired and decided to return. My mom and dad were extremely happy to be back, and my dad returned to some of those same old haunts with those same pals yelling tongs. <clears throat> he'd walk around the streets of the Calton, sometimes wearing a Celtic blazer, and when he did wear a Celtic blazer, he'd get caught in mistaken identity, just walking the streets. So sometimes he'd be mistaken for Bertie Ald, right? He would never correct those people and sign autographs for as he was Bertie Ald. My mom sometimes would, hi, Mrs. Ald, how you doing? Right? He just went along with it. He went to Willie O'Neill's funeral and was mistaken for an ex-Celtic player. They ushered him up to sit with the Lisbon Lions. Bertie all turned around and go, who are you? And my dad goes, I'm signing autographs for you. Bertie goes, where's my money then? <laughs> he was present for the birth of all his grandchildren, Ryan, Heather, Kevin, and Declan. <clears throat> he loved you all very much. He was very proud of all of you. He loved his pals, he loved his pubs, he loved Bacardi, he loved his dominoes, he loved Celtic immensely, he loved the streets of the Celt and the pattern of the people, the wit of the area, he loved his family, all his brothers and sisters, nephews, nieces, um, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-laws, cousins. He tried to count them all, just on the Lynn side, he got to 150 and gave up. You know, but, but his biggest love of all was my mom. He worshipped the ground you walked on, Mum. There's no mistake. You were his rock, his steady, his minder. You kept Dad on the straight and narrow and always made sure he was safe when he got home from whatever adventure he was on. <clears throat> his love for you was very deep and true, as yours of him. A love that started in these streets, spanned the globe, and returned right back here. So the common theme, love, Dad, we love you. You will be much missed. Not a day goes by without us thinking of you. Another common word I've seen and heard about my dad is legend, that you truly are. You were famous in your own right. Sorry. <clears throat> Just like to say thanks to the staff and nurses and doctors at the Beats and Cancer Center for the kind, compassionate treatment of my father in his last days. <clears throat> During the pandemic rules, you allowed us to see my dad without issue, and for that, we're extremely thank you, thankful. To my family over here in Scotland, Susan and I are so very grateful for your genuine love and compassion for our parents. Lucina, Pauline, Uncle Jimmy, Aunt Anna, Aunt Irene, Jean, thank you so much. Been wonderful in all my family. To my wife, Melissa, I love you. Thank you for your tremendous support. <clears throat> Knowing that my dad loved you very much. I know you want to be here, but can't. You're looking after Declan. Hi, Declan. Anne-Marie. I have no idea where we would be without you. My mom and dad just lit up when you entered the room. Your caring for my parents, your organization, your kindness, your compassion, the sheer amount of time that you spent. Thank you so much. We're forever grateful to you and Gary. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you. took me back to 1988 when I was a student in Chicago studying theology for the priesthood. I hadn't watched a Celtic game for years and somebody had the amazing idea, let's go up to Toronto. There's a Celtic supporters club up there. And up we went and what was supposed to be a quick couple of days trip turned out to be two weeks. Because needless to say, the joy and the welcome that we got in Toronto Celtic Supporters Club was, uh, well, actually I don't remember most of it, but from what they tell me, it was quite memorable. And I get the impression just by listening to Des there that what we're about to do today is a celebration. Yes, we come together to mourn the loss of a very special person, but to be honest, the Requiem Mass is mostly about giving thanks and celebrating a life because all of you were lucky to be touched by this life 
so you've got something to give God thanks. The family, in a very special way, are lucky the years that they had with this person and the friends, etc. And just by listening to Des there, it's obviously a moment to give God thanks for the gift that he has given in this one man's life. Can you imagine all of us, how we come into contact with each other on a daily basis and maybe sometimes we don't give God thanks enough when they're there. And yet here is this man, just by even, just by looking at the photographs, I didn't know this, but just by looking at the photographs, I think we're here to celebrate a man of joy. There's a lot of joy in what Des had to say as well. And, and we, uh, yes, we're here to support the family, to give them our prayers, but most of all, we're here to spend a moment in this church before we lay Des to, to rest. Thank you, God. Thank you for the gift that he was, for what he brought into our lives. None of us is perfect. I've yet to bury anybody out of this chapel who's, a, who's perfect. That's why we come to churches like this, because of our imperfection. And so we ask God's forgiveness also for his imperfections as well. So I could invite you to please stand as we begin our recognize. Let's spend a wee moment in silence before we begin our Mass with our own thoughts and our own prayers to gather ourselves here for this occasion. But most of all, to ask God's forgiveness. Maybe, maybe unlike days at times where we didn't appreciate the love and the care that's all around us in our families and in our friends. And we ask God's forgiveness when we fail to forgive as God forgives us. Let's spend a moment in silence with days in our thoughts. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Desmond, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May please be seated for our readings. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. It was this salvation that the prophets were looking and searching so hard for. Their prophecies were about the grace which was to come to you. The Spirit of Christ, which was in them, foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would come after them. And they tried to find out at what time and in what circumstances all this was to be expected. It was revealed to them that the news they brought of all things which have now been announced to you by those who preached to you the good news through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven was not for you and not for themselves. Even the angels longed to catch a glimpse of these things. Free your minds then of encumbrances, control them, and put your trust in nothing but the grace that will be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Do not behave in a way that you liked to before you learnt the truth. Make a habit of obedience. 
Be holy in all you do, since it is the Holy One who has called you. And Scripture says, Be holy, for I am holy. This is the word of the Lord. letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears, and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, he opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone close to the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth round his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Will you please be seated for a few moments. Sometimes words don't work. Sometimes you've heard the phrase, words are not enough. And as we struggle to come to terms with loss, and many of us, all of us, at some point in our lives, and maybe even recently, given what we all have gone through as a community over the past couple of years, have suffered loss. I definitely have in my own family, and I think many 
thousands of families up and down the country. But I remember those moments, and I remember moments like this, and I remember moments standing here on pulpits like this when the only phrase that comes to my mind is, words are useless. Words are just not enough, and it's true. But we, we always try and somehow try and rationalize, we try and put into words, because that's what we do when we grow up in a culture where you need to say something. You know, you need to say something about this. Uh, we grow up in a culture, you, you need to write something down, you need to express something. And sometimes it's not the words that we express, but it's the actions that we express that suit us. So I'd like to invite you this, this afternoon, instead of using words, and I'm going to contradict myself because I'm going to use them anyway, but I'm going to ask you to picture a scene and I'm going to ask you to imagine that you're somewhere else. You're in Palestine 2,000 years ago. You're living in a small village in Palestine. Your brother, you're there with your family and your brother has died. A bit like you're doing right now this morning. And a friend of your brother is this prophet, this popular figure, this popular rabbi who's been getting around talking to people about changing, talking about people about making their lives better, talking about let, tell them not to be hypocrites, tell them to love their enemies. And your brother's made really good friends with this person and he's very popular and he's healing the sick and he's raising from the dead. And he doesn't turn up. He's late. And you've buried your brother. And there you are, hundreds of people gathered to welcome this Jesus onto the scene, the so-called friend of Lazarus. And you're there. And what does Jesus do? He doesn't use many words, he uses a few words. But it's the words that Jesus used in this episode are the words that he's praying to his father. He doesn't brush anybody aside. Very calmly, very collectively, he prays to his father. He prays for the people present. And he's confronted with this stone, this massive stone placed in front of the tomb with people weeping and mourning. Whereas we all think, when we see things like that, stones, immovable, can't change anything. It's done, it's dusted we move on, whereas Jesus sees resurrection. He sees the need to move the stone. It's the first thing he asked them to do, to move the stone. And each time we come to chapel to celebrate a requiem mass, brothers and sisters, what we're really doing, as soon as we walk through those doors, and for Desmond today, we're asking, sitting here, asking for that stone to be removed. Not literally, but the stone that surrounds us of mourning and grieving and death. Because if anything I understood from Desi's eulogy is that life and joy and happiness and love for his family would have wanted, that's what Desmond would have wanted to continue beyond the doors of this church. So like that seen in Palestine. We are stood there waiting. Sometimes we don't believe. Sometimes we'd rather the stone just stayed where it was. But we're Christians and we're people of hope and we believe stones get moved. And the thing that amazes me the most about the story of the Gospel of John and in Lazarus is that final phrase that Jesus uses. He says it and he walks away. He says, unbind him and let him go free. Unbind him and let him go free. With each word of prayer today, with each gesture during this Requiem Mass, with each action that we do inside this church for Desmond this, morning, this afternoon, unbind him and let him go free. That's what we're asking. He has served his time of service and love 
on this earth. And God, the gift that he gave you in this life, God now says, welcome back. And Desmond's up there looking down to you lot saying, I had a good time. I love you all, but unbind me and let me go free. And each time we come to pray for his soul, that's what we pray for this morning. So yes, we come to remember, we come to mourn, we come to celebrate, we come to give thanks. But most of all, somewhere, and it might not be for all of us, because we all might not have the same level of faith. We might not believe in resurrection. We might not believe that somehow after death there is hope. But somewhere in all of us, there is something that says, thank you, God, for that gift that you gave me. Thank you, and in his memory, let us unbind him and let him go free. So I'd like to pass on my own prayers to the, to the family this morning. I didn't know Desmond, but oh, just I get a sense of that joy and that, that laughter uh, that he brought to, to many lives. And uh, in this Requiem Mass this morning, we remember him in the repose of his soul, but mostly also the family that he leaves behind, the family that have been touched by his love, and that we are here to support them with our prayers and with our presence. Eternal rest, and unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul, the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let's now stand for our prayers of faith. The response to the prayers this morning is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Desmond, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of Desmond, that they may be consoled in the grief by the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those who have died, for all who are mourning, who each day are filled with the longing for the presence of someone they love. We pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We spend a few moments in silence with our own personal memories and prayers and intentions on this day. And we offer all our prayers to the intercession of Mary, our Queen of Peace. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed is the divine one, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask you all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you to be seated, please, for our offering.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice endures may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Desmond, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Could we stand, please? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be considered by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Please to kneel if you can or to take a seat. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Desmond, whom you have called today from this life to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We stand, please. And at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven as it is in heaven. Give us this day of your day, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and give us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let's only say a word. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. When I come to our communion time, I would, uh, for those of you who wish to receive communion, please come forward when the past keepers uh, show you the way. And for those who, for any reason, can't receive our uh, communion but would like to come forward for a blessing, please, please do. Just let me know that you'd like a blessing by putting your hands across your, your chest like so.
We ask that life be kind And watch us from above We hope each soul will find Another soul to love Let this be Shadows fill our day. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we. The Church of St. Alphonsus in the Calton, where you're sat right now, was built through the blood, sweat and tears of the first Irish immigrants in the east end of Glasgow who came here for a better life. And it's probably very appropriate that Desmond's final mass takes place in a church like this as a reminder of Desmond's sacrifice that he did for his own family and the love that he showed and this place the whole spirit of this place is about remembering that community so in Desmond's memory uh, we now invite you to stand and pray for his final commendation Lord God whose son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey Merciful grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Desmond may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully meet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
true. 